Uh, welcome back to the workshop handyman. We're out here in the shop today. I don't know. I haven't done anything in a little while on the, on the channel. So I need to go ahead and show you that. I'm still working on stuff. And uh, today I think we've got a couple of projects to work on. But we're going to kind of emphasize a little bit um, on a uh, Husqvarna and a chainsaw. I think it's going to be the first thing we're going to really get into. Um, so let me show you what we've got. And kind of... Uh, We've got a couple projects here. Well, one of them is going to be these rakes. I've got to fix. They're brand new, and uh, they're usually pretty good rakes. But for some reason, Landscape didn't have a way of holding these on. They're all coming back to the store. I do work part-time at a hardware store. And uh, we've taken in several of these under warranty because this whole thing just falls on out. And what the problem is, is there's nothing really here to hold it. So I'm just going to drill, put a screw through that, and hold all that together. So that'll be a little project. That's a nice, easy little fix. Uh, let's see, we had a capacitor dropped off by the neighbor. He thinks it's a good one, uh, and I kind of hold on to those things. So we'll run a little test on that a little bit later on. So we'll set that off as a side project. Uh, but the real project today is going to be, I've got a, uh, this Husqvarna 142 chainsaw. And, uh, as I say, I work at a little hardware store and we have, uh, some small engine repairs done. And the gentleman that was doing them. Uh, I think, as rumor has it, has looked at this. He's no longer working on them at the store anymore. So we're trying to clean up the inventory. And I'm kind of getting stuck with uh, doing the mechanical works on these. So I really have no idea what it is other than it was brought into the store. Uh, I think he looked at it, uh, said it wasn't possible to fix or whatever. And it just kind of sat on the shelf. So we're going to go ahead and see if I can come up with... Uh, what I do to troubleshoot it, see if I can actually fix it or if it's worth working on. So that's where we're going to start. Now, I'll try to set this up and just kind of go over what I, I normally would do when getting started on something like this. Uh, I don't know if that's a good shot. I don't know, but we'll kind of see how it works here a little bit and see if we can get you worked out. Uh, of course, I always like to try to start out one because it have fuel in it. Oh, boy, that's tough. Ooh, he's got something in there. Looks like uh, it is definitely full of fuel. It doesn't smell bad. I like to just make sure it's good. So it's got plenty of fuel. And let's see if we get any chain oil in it, just so we know what we're working with. Uh, it does have bar oil in it does look like somebody's worked on this a little bit because I do see at a quick glance that the, uh, there's a screw missing here in the cover. We might have to try to uh, find one of those when we're all done with it. Uh, next thing I'd like to probably do is go ahead and uh, pop this cover off and let's just take a look, see if there's filters and uh, whatnot in there. And it looks like that's going to be a Torx bit. Let's see what size we've got that as. Yes, it's going to require, let's see, that's a T25. So we can pop this off and see what we've got inside. Just kind of get a general idea what we're up against here. Hopefully. Looks like just uh, three screws on that one. It comes off. Uh... Oh, that fuel filter's awful solid, or if that's the way that's supposed to look. Let's take it off of there anyway, just to make sure. Let's get rid of it. Now, taking a look at this, I'm not seeing... Uh, a carburetor primer bulb or anything, so that means it's not going to have any way of priming this. Uh, other than that, carburetor looks nice and clean. Uh, looks like the choke. Everything looks clean there also, so that looks good. Uh, let's see, stop and on, so that looks good. I hope that's not a problem. We'll have to look at that. Um, Oh, it looks pretty decent, so we'll pop this cover off and see if I can get me a little wrench to uh, 
take that carb or the uh, spark plug off. See, I don't think I've got one big enough here for that, do I? No, I have to get me a spark plug wrench. goodness they've got that a little tight looks like it might be a little bit too big for it too but it shouldn't take that much to get it off so let me find a socket and see if we can bust that thing loose okay i've got a better fitting socket this one goes right on it and uh let's see if we can get the plug out of here now mm. okay that plug is about 10 times tighter than it needed to be put in there uh yes yeah, you want to put it in snug but not quite like that. Yeah, definitely not a new plug. I don't know if you can see that. I think I'm going to go ahead and try to test that and see if it's worth anything. Uh, we'll look down in there and see if we see anything going on. I wish I had a little scope to get down in there and see what the insides look like. We're going to go ahead. I'm just going to kind of clean this plug up and then we'll probably do a little test to see if we can tell if it's actually going to fire. So I just run a wire brush over it. Okay, I've uh, cleaned it up a little bit, and I'm going to check the plug. I do have a plug tester, but sometimes this one here just sitting right in there. Make sure the end of the plug is touching the housing, because it does have to be shorted out. And then we'll just give it a couple of quick pulls. And you can see, there's a spark down in there. So, plug is definitely uh, firing, so that's a good sign. Uh, next, I really kind of want to just check, make sure, I check compression, make sure... That I can actually feel some compression and it has that so I would say that's good there's compression checks you can do like I say I'm not an actual small engine repair shop so I don't have that kind of equipment at my leisure so we're gonna just kind of keep rolling with what we got so I'll go ahead and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and set this plug back in there I believe and uh, we'll see if she'll just pull over and see what she does Okay, we stick the plug in there, and like I say, that thing definitely does not be there. Uh, uh, that torque got hard. I don't know exactly what the torque spec is, but just a good snug plug will, will take care of it. So I don't quite understand why they thought it was necessary to do that. Okay, our switch is in the off position. We should probably choke it. And then I'm going to set it down on the floor and give it a couple pulls and just see what happens. Let's see if this thing will, it does not. Okay, some of them you'll be able to lock this in and, and give it a full throttle. I don't know if this one needs that. So let's see, according to the directions, we should make sure the slide is off. Um, full choke, pull five times, half choke, and then go ahead and start it. So let's see if we can do that. And uh, let me set it on the floor here and see if we can, see if you can tell them actually doing it here let's set that right there uh we've got full choke and we're gonna pull it here five times well we're gonna go to half choke Fired up. Now what's, uh, let's go back to half a choke. Okay. Well, we know it fired, so let's figure out why it quit like that. I'm going to check and make sure that it has, uh, I'm going to have to look in that tank and see if it's got the fuel line down in there all the way. If it's pulling up fuel or what it's doing. Okay, next thing I decided to do, uh, there's a high and low jet on all these carburetors. Sometimes those things are, get a little bit of gum or whatever in them. So you have to actually go out there and purchase a bunch of these little 
screwdrivers and each one of them let's see if I can show you have different uh, things in them that uh, adjust these little carburetors this one here after playing around I think this one is a seven splined so we can reach that down into here now the big thing about these carburetors are if they've set a while and even though we got a little far off of them I have found in the past that sometimes just moving these jets in and out uh, will clear a little bit of gum and whatever off of them as you seat them back down and bring them back the biggest key is to always put them in there when you do it to count the revolutions in count the revolutions out so you can put it back about where it went and they're supposed to go so we're going to do that by simply putting it in there and we're going to take this one and turn it we're going to go half one half two and just a little more so we seat that down good and we're going to go back the same amount half one half two and generally i find these to be that's the uh, high side which is on the right it has a little h down here and then the low side will do the same like i say generally speaking i find these to be about a turn and a half each uh, that one there is a little over two so that might be some issue let's see what this one is where did i start right there half one half yeah but i one and a half so that one i like the, that one pretty good so we're gonna go back one and a half on that one and a half all right and then we'll uh, i think we're gonna go ahead seems how we know this thing's gonna fire up i'm gonna go ahead and put this back on there if it looks clean i think that's the way they're designed so we're gonna go ahead and put that back on so that we make sure we're getting the right air mixture on this. Sometimes that filter will make a little bit of difference. So we'll set this back on and get it back on the floor and pull it over and see if that helped any. Okay, let's see if we can uh, start this back up again. See if this will do any good. We'll pull the choke back out, tote it over. And I'm gonna spin. Do the three, we'll kick it back to half a choke. Okay, it's firing up a little bit better than it was. I'm gonna say that that high idle is, or the high jet is maybe flooding that thing out a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead like I said, I kind of like the uh, um, turn and a half. So I think I'm going to close that off a little bit. Let's see if that helps. I'm going to take it all the way in. We know we were a little over two. So we're going to take it back in and came, come back out one and a half. So we're there. We're going to go a half, one and a half. Let's see if that helps it at all. It may, it may not, but we like to say, hope it does anyways. Let's give it just a little bit of choke. Maybe it needs more gas. Well, I think that did worse, so we'll go back and play with it a little bit more the other direction. Let's open her up a little bit. Maybe she's not getting enough. So we'll go back to the half that we were missing. And this isn't helping any. We're going back to half it was missing. We'll go just a little bit more then. See if it was maybe starving itself. Let's try one more time.
Okay, I think that actually did it. Now what's happening, let me show you what's going on here that I'm having a little trouble with, is right down here on the top of this, there's a, when I'm pulling on the throttle here, this thing is actually, when it's running, it's, it's moving up. So when I'm hitting the throttle, this thing just moves out of the way. So it's not, it's not able to let me do what I need to do too well. So what I'm gonna do, so I'm going to go ahead and put the cover back on it so that that'll stay in place. And uh, other than that, we'll be all right. There we go. We'll go ahead and tighten that down and see if that helps. Okay, so oops, I, I missed a little step there. <clears throat> the thing didn't start, so I'm going to check, like I said, the uh, fuel line and all in here. It really acts like it's just stealing or not getting enough gas. So let's, we dump the uh, gas that was in there. It is a little funky looking. I don't know what they mix that with. It might be that pre-mixed gas can. We're gonna look down in there and see. Maybe the filter's plugged in. I don't know. I see one down in there. Looks like the line is good. We're gonna reach down in there and see if we can snatch that bad boy out of there and, and uh, take a look at it a little bit closer. Let me get a little wire and stick in there and grab it. So that's usually not too bad a job. Reach in there, get a hold of her, pull her on up out. Get a line that's kind of nasty. I don't know what's been on that. That's got some nasty feel to it. I'm really kind of wondering if it's just that filter is messed up. I might try to put a different filter on that, see if that helps, but it does have some nasty something on there. I don't know if you can see that, some orange. Which I mean the whole saw is orange, but I think I'm going to pull that off, see if I've got another filter that'll go on there just to make sure that's not a problem, or at least blow that one out. Let's do that. Okay, well, I didn't find another filter, but I did take this and I blew it out, and it's got pretty good airflow on it, but it had a lot of stuff in there, a lot of foam and everything. But make sure you always blow through the little hole here, make sure you get an airflow out of that, and that'll blow everything back out of the filter. If you start hitting it this side, you're just going to force that back into it. So we'll do that, we'll put this back in here. And I have a little pair of safety wire pliers make it pretty good for crimping that because I don't have anything else to do it, but that ought to do that part of it. We're gonna drop that back into the tank and make sure she's laying flat on the bottom so that it'll pick up and we're not, uh, got a problem with that. Okay, it's laying flat there. It should float around pretty good. And I'm going to fill this up with some fresh gas that I have mixed and see if that maybe solves some of the problem too. Okay, we're going to go ahead and try to pick up on this. We took a couple days break because one, my camera didn't ever stop working. Uh, I'm going to try to get a second one here to try to kind of catch it and see if that one works better. But anyways, uh, I fooled around with the carburetor a little bit the other day, and, and we never could get this to run right. I took the carburetor off, so I'm going to go through the steps to show you how to get that off again. And we're going to go ahead and just replace the carburetor. The carburetor's, uh, I think it was a little less than $20 anyways, for a brand new carburetor. Uh, some of the little seals and, and diaphragms and stuff in here look a little bit bad, and instead of buying a rebuild kit, which is probably about the same amount of money, I just went ahead and, and grabbed it up and replaced it. So... We'll go ahead and take the uh, air filter back off. And then we're going to uh, go ahead and get a, I think it's a 10 millimeter probably. Yes, and we'll take this loose. And I have my little tray here, we'll set that in. fell down in there. We'll have to try to pick that back up. Maybe with a little set of needle nose here. Okay, and then we're going to need uh, something smaller, maybe a seven. Let's try that. Yeah, seven millimeter. We'll take the rest of the carburetor off. So we'll go ahead and take that loose. And this side. Those two screws out, 
And that basically relieves the carburetor, I believe. Of, oh, we got two more screws down there. Forgot about those. So there's two little ones down in the bottom here. These would be the Phillips. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, we might be able to just loosen those and pull that out, but maybe not. Yeah, we just need to loosen that up. It has little grooves on there so that it uh, just slides out. And let's see if there's anything else. No, that's got it held. Okay, for our carburetor, or for our throttle, this piece here really is pretty simple. It just picks up and out of there. And then for your, your choke lever, we're going to have to take that and just kind of, it just kind of pushes in there. So we're going to take that and just kind of squeeze it a little bit and push it back out of that little holder. Sometimes they're a little bit of a pain to get out. So we're going to try to work it out if we can. Okay, and we'll disconnect the gas line. That just pulls off and it's up above the tank. And what we'll do is this piece here just slides off and it goes back on just like that. So what we'll do is we'll take the new carburetor. And we're gonna set that around here just like that and just make sure, let's see here, this is gonna go this way, okay? We want to make sure that everything matches here just perfectly. And it does, it does. So I think we're in good shape there. So we'll take the new one and we'll set that on in there. Now the first thing, uh, let's check our gasket, make sure that's good. It did come with a new gasket, but it's not really quite the same as that original gasket. I don't know if so we really even need to have this one added. That one's in pretty good shape. And I don't know, we got two of them here. I think I'm gonna leave that one in there and I'm gonna just put this one on because I don't think there's a problem with that one. We can go ahead and reattach the fuel line Let me attach the throttle cable or the throttle lever. So did it in place. The choke just kind of pushes back on there. Okay. And then we can uh, put the little ca cap here back over it. Oops, there. Is that the? I guess I got that the wrong way. We got to go this way with it. There we go. And that sets back into its little area there. And I think next is going to be the little bracket here. And then, uh, I don't know, it's got a little gasket here too. Maybe we'll do that on both sides of this one instead of that other. I almost think I like that idea better. I don't know if it really needs a gasket on one side. Let's go ahead with this. As close that choke a little bit here. Get this gasket in place. Let's stick this screw through that one into the carburetor and into the hole there. And we'll do the same thing with this one. And 
and then we should be able to just tighten that down. down and make sure that the throttle moves good. Hmm. For some reason though the choke does not want to stay on all the way. I don't know if that gasket maybe is almost getting in the way. I think I'm going to take that back off of there. I think it's in the way more than it's doing good, so. wasn't a gasket on that original carburetor. I don't really know why you'd need one on this side either, really. So, And that other side gasket was good. I say reuse it. If it was torn, I'd try that new one. And let's see if this tightens down and choke goes and holds in place. Yes, there we go. Choke holds. And then it goes. But when you do the choke, you should be throttle should open that up. So make sure that works. And make sure your gas line's out of the way of everything. Looks like it is. And then we'll take this one. Oops, here we need to tighten this. Don't forget that. And then we've got to put the uh, other piece here back on. Oops, sorry, is that the way that went? Or is it that way there? That yeah, looks a little better. And start these screws. down a little bit. Now this one actually came with a new filter also. So I might just go ahead and that looks like a good match there too if I take these screws out. I don't know which ones are actually a better filter. I almost like this one better. I think it keeps out more. I don't know. I think I'm going to use the original one. It does come with the new ones but I think I like the original factory on this one better, and this one's not dirty, so not anymore anyways. Okay, and there we go. We got a carburetor re replaced. Now the only thing left to do is to, well, we'll set the cover on there because we shouldn't need that off of there anymore. And that there again was a T25 tip. Tighten that down. And 
now let's see if we can get her to start. We should be able to pull the choke out and uh, set her on the floor here and pull her over a couple times. Okay, we're going to go ahead and uh, see what we can do with this. Hopefully she'll fire right up for us this time and stay running. Pull it over. Get some. Take the choke back off. And that works a whole lot better than trying to rebuild the carburetor for the price, the cost, whatever you want to say. Um, so we're going to go ahead, uh, a repair chainsaw, and uh, hope that helped out a little bit. That's how you troubleshoot and fix those. Uh, like I say, I'll try to leave a link uh, on the uh, bottom here someplace that tells you about the kit that I bought or the carburetor I bought. Uh, like I say, it's just an Amazon purchase. Uh, most most of these small engines, I find the carburetors pretty inexpensive, and most of them work pretty darn good. And like that one there, I mean, just a couple of pulls, it fires up, sounds good. I'll turn this back over, and and the customer I'm fixing this for will be plenty happy to have us all back. So we'll go ahead and turn it over to them. We appreciate it, and uh, thanks for tuning into the workshop, handyman. Please like and subscribe if you have time. That would really be appreciated, and uh, we'll catch you on the next project.